Buckle your seatbelt. It's time for another episode of the Prepper Recon Podcast. I've personally been buying gold and silver from JM Bullion for over two years. They offer the best prices over spot that I can find, and I've never had a problem with an order. If you're looking to trade in some of your fiat paper for real money, check out jmbullion.com today. Ready Made Resources is a trusted name in the Prepper community because they've been around for 18 years. They offer great prices on night vision, water filtration, long-term storage food, solar energy components, and provide free technical service. Get ready for an uncertain future at readymaderesources.com. Today's guest is Paul Munson of sunoven.com. Paul, welcome back to the show. Oh, good to be with you again. Thanks. Absolutely. Uh, spring's here. Do you have any new prepper-related projects going on? Are, are, you, are you putting in a garden this year or anything? Oh, yeah. we. Um, I um, have got uh, just a small plot. I've got about uh, three and a half acres and um, um, raising chickens and uh, um, had some family health issues. We were all set to start raising pigs this year and <laughs> had to put that on hold. But uh, we do quite a bit of gardening. And then um, I've got a small orchard area and um, have about 15 apple and pear trees. So um, we do quite a bit of um, getting our own food storage together with our own gardening each year. Oh, that's fantastic. We had a pretty nice garden over the winter. Of course, being here in Florida, uh, you know, that's that's our big growing season is the winter. We're going to maybe try to sneak, it, sneak in one more quick planting before it gets unbearably hot But in, uh, in <laughs> here in central Florida. Um, mm-hmm. It's probably too late to get another crop of the mixed field greens, which we like. You know, we like our salads and stuff. Um, but uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll get some more mustard greens, tomatoes, green beans, sweet potatoes, that kind of thing. And um, it, if I get enough tomatoes, I want to try sun-dried tomatoes in my sun oven. Uh, do you do a lot of dehydrating with your sun oven? Yes, I do. Um, we we do have a big electric dehydrator and do lots of dehydrating to you know kind of create our own food storage. But um, it, we love using the sun oven, particularly for sun-dried tomatoes. I mean, there, there's a flavor that comes out of the tomatoes that when you dry them in the sun that you don't get in the electric dehydrator, and um, you know it works really really well to to, you know, to make delicious sun-dried tomatoes. And my wife does a lot of herbs, and one of the advantages of um, the sun oven is that uh, when you do fine things like herbs and you turn on the, the the electric dehydrator, they kind of have a tendency to go all over the place. And uh, so if you're doing fine things, um, they work out real well when you do them in the sun oven um, because you don't have that anything that, that moves them around and dries them out. So it's great to, you know, sun oven's a wonderful way to dehydrate as well. And uh, we, we put out banana trees last year when we moved uh i've probably got a little while before they start producing but uh, that's another thing i want to try dehydrating i love i buy the banana chips from you know the the dehydrated banana chips i, I love those they're just uh, uh i gotta take it easy on them because they're actually kind of <laughs> de- they're, they're high calorie actually because you cook all the water out of it and you're just getting the but it's like candy it's like eating candy i guess uh, but because of that, because it is high calorie, you know, it's a great thing for food storage, and it's really it's like the perfect survival food because you get all that that complex uh, sugars in there, the, the the good sugars if there is a good sugar, and uh, and uh, it's very compact for for the the space that it takes it up. I, uh, since you have apple trees, do you do you dehydrate a lot of apples? We do, yeah. We um, we um, dried a lot of apples. Um, we we have lots of apples, so <laughs> we we do wind up using the electric dehydrator more than the sun oven um, for that. Um, but um, you know, making apple chips is delicious when you dry them in the sun. But in a, well, uh, a regular dehydrator, yeah. But in a, gr- a grid down situation where you didn't have that electric dehydrator, you'd always be able to uh, toggle over really quick, right? Yeah, that that's one of the real advantages of. Of something like the sun oven is that you know if your garden's ever ready to be harvested at a time you didn't have power, having a way that you could dry would become extremely important. And uh, so the sun oven um, can do double duty in that it can cook as well as uh, be used as a solar dryer. And and on the topic of not having power, Kim Jong's really been rattling the saber lately. Uh, he's been testing H bombs. Uh, right before Super Bowl, he he launched another satellite, uh, which he claims is a uh, agricultural satellite. But of course, the CIA thinks that it's <laughs> it's probably a an EMP bomb that he's just uh, 
uh, circling over America every few hours uh, that he can detonate at the time of his choosing. Um, and that more recently, he's th threatened us with a direct nuclear strike. So uh, you've been paying attention to all of that? Yeah, I have. And, and, and it's amazing that um, people have a tendency, I mean, the government seems to not take him serious. And yet when somebody clearly states what they want to do in the idea of, you know, I mean, whether it's him or ISIS of, you know, attacking people on U.S. soil, it's just amazing that the, the government thinks so. That's kind of silly. But um, I think history has shown us that as soon as you, when you really ignore your enemies or just pretend they're not a problem, you, you pay for it. And I think that's something that um, he's going to get the technology he needs. He's working at it diligently. And, um, you know, maybe he has had some failures, but um, I think he's also getting more and more successes. So um, that's going to be a very real threat to us because. We just one of the things, as you know, I've done a lot of travel around the world with sun ovens, and um, I've worked with them on five different continents. And and what I see as I go into different cultures is how Americanized and how our world view as Americans are somewhat distorted because we think the whole world thinks the way we do and can't imagine people doing major irrational things almost just for the sake of. You know, being irrational, but that's the reality of dictators around the world. Um, ISIS has other motives and what they want to accomplish. And uh, as an American, you just you can't get your mind around why would somebody do that. But they're very capable of doing things and then putting all of their resources into destroying their enemy, even if it means destroying themselves in the process. And we just don't comprehend that in our Americanized way of thinking. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. KD Armor offers affordable body armor, including level 3 trauma plates made of AR-500 steel. These plates can endure multiple rounds from pistols and rifles up to 7.62 NATO. Use coupon code PREPPERRECON to get 10% off your entire order at KDArmor.com. That's C-A-T-I Armor.com. Get prepared before disaster strikes. PrepperRecon.com offers Molly compatible individual first aid kits for your home, auto, or bug out bag. These kits have everything you need to address a traumatic injury, including an Israeli battle dressing, quick clot, EMT shears, suture kit, steri strips, tourniquet, tough strip bandages, and so much more. Kits are available in OD Green, Coyote, Black, and ACU. $99 includes shipping. Go to PrepperRecon.com and click the store tab at the top of the home page. Order today before it's too late the intelligence community i think they're most concerned that north korea could hit us with that emp uh they projected a 90 percent die-off rate um, that's primarily from dehydration and starvation um and they seem to think that that an emp would give kim the most bang for his buck uh it, the, the big thing with the with starvation is of course you know you don't have if you don't have electricity, you you don't have uh, you don't have anything. You don't have gas pumps to fill the 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 trucks with gas. I mean, that's that's assuming that you have a, a truck that's that was hardened against EMP that that its computer didn't get fried from the EMP to, to begin with. Uh, but you don't have gas to pump into the truck. You don't have uh, grocery stores with uh, with air conditioning or refrigeration to store or lights to store the food. Um, hardly anybody even uses cash anymore. So all the, the payment systems are electronic. So just everything kind of goes away when you lose electricity. And uh, and then, then you have the water pumps. Uh, most of the, the water pumps for the municipalities are dependent on computers and, and electricity. And uh, when that goes away, a lot of folks will be able to find water but, uh, you know, through a, a lake or a stream or whatever, but they won't have any idea how to purify it. And, mm. uh, and, and they might be drinking water, but, you know, if they get, if they get, uh, dysentery from, from, from the water, then they'll actually lose more fluid faster than they can put it in and, uh, and, and still die of dehydration, even though they have a water source. Um, so it's, it's starvation and, and dehydration or, or what's projected to be the two major killers uh, after an EMP, even though it doesn't it doesn't necessarily have a hard kill uh, like a traditional nuclear strike would. Um, sun oven something that you can use to to purify your water. Is that right? 
Yes, you can um, boil water in the sun oven or you could pasteurize water. Um, when we promote sun ovens with full kits, we include an item that's called a WAP, your water pasteurization indicator. And um, you can, the benefit of pasteurizing water over boiling, they kill the same germs, they do exactly the same thing. It's just more than twice as fast, almost three times as fast. Uh, water pasteurizes is a little different than milk. You just bring water up above 150 degrees Fahrenheit for six minutes, and that then your water is pasteurized. And as uh, what we call WAPI's water pasteurization indicators measure that, so you know when water is safe to drink. And uh, that's something that a lot of people use their sun ovens for. Some people keep a piece of cheesecloth with their sun oven so they can pour the water through the cheesecloth. Then that takes solid impurities out of it, and then you can boil or pasteurize it um, in a sun oven. And then once folks take their head out of the sand and they start considering what it would be like to live in a society with no electricity, uh, most come to the conclusion that they need to start storing food. But now you've got that food, you got to be able to cook it, right? Yeah, it, it, it takes a lot of energy to cook preparedness foods. Um, you, if you look, for example, um, at most of the uh, freeze-dried and dehydrated foods, um, on each of the cans or package, there's always a recipe or a formula that says that it's usually a ratio of approximately three or four cups of water for each cup of the dried food that you have. Um, but when you have to boil that, that takes a great deal of energy to be able to get that up to a boiling temperature. And um, you can, in the sun oven, the wonderful thing is you don't have to pre-boil. What you do in the sun oven is you take one quarter less water than you would if you're going to, uh, then the, the can says, or the package says, and you just put the water in at the ambient temperature, you mix it, you throw it, um, you mix it, you thoroughly stir it together, and you put it in the sun oven, and um, you will then heat without boiling the water first, which saves a lot of energy, but also uses less water. And of course, um, in a preparedness situation, potable water could be a very serious concern. So between the two things, there's a real advantage to being able to um, do your preparedness foods in a sun oven. And then uh – You've done a lot of disaster help work or worked in, in really poor regions with, with the sun oven. And, uh, Haiti's one of those places that they, you know, after they get hit, they, of course they had the earthquake, which is really bad, but they've got, had some really, really bad hurricanes and everything. And, uh, it's, it's odd, but you can look at that, you can look at that island with Haiti on one side and the Dominican Republic on the other. And you can see the difference of which nation is which from outer space because they have just so stripped their that side of resources and chopped down all the trees for fires and things like that. But building fires to cook food or purify water, like you said, it's a huge resource drain. You got it takes a lot of wood. Uh, it takes a lot of energy to go find the wood, locate the wood. But at some point, that wood is not growing back as fast as it's getting stripped away and, and depleted. So uh, especially for folks that are in an urban or suburban area, that that's what they think they're going to do is is go get firewood. Um, you know, that might, that might work for a week or two, but you're going to be really, really tired. You're going to be exposing yourself to being out amongst other people, uh, looking for that same, uh, limited resource. And there's, I guarantee you, there's going to be, uh, fights over it and everything else. Uh, but besides all of that, the other thing you're going to do is you're going to send up a smoke signal and you're going to let everybody else within a, a two to three mile radius know that you've got something worth building a fire for. Um, is uh, is uh, that discreet discretion of being able to cook without smoke? Um, that's something you're able to do with the sun oven. Do you think that that adds a, an extra value to? Oh, most definitely adds an extra value because um, it is. I mean, you do need to point the sun oven towards the sun. But other than that, um, if you're in an area that people can't see you, there's no nothing then that. Um, uh, lets people know that you're cooking and so there is no smoke that you see there's no flames that you see and it definitely is easier to be discreet with the sun oven and uh, we've been working in Haiti for many many years and I've been to Haiti numerous times and even just from an airplane you can you can tell the difference of the deforestation of Haiti versus the the DR um, the Dominican Republic um, it, it's absolutely amazing and you know the average 
in in third world countries, the average for each person, you use a half a metric ton of wood per year per person. So um, if you think about, and that's with third world diets in the U.S., I would think it would be close to double that or close to a metric ton of wood a year for just for cooking. And so wood isn't going to last a long time because at the same time you're trying to cut down wood, um, cut down trees, your neighbors are trying to do the same thing. So it really has a, a Besides for all the issues with deforestation, the the bottom line is that wood's going to be gone much faster than most people realize. Even very, very forested areas can be depleted quickly, and around the world, deforestation is such a big problem. And uh, you can watch, you look at a country like Ethiopia, that when I was a kid, Haile Selassie was the emperor of. It was one of the most progressive countries, and it was a tropical paradise. Now there's famines there every other year because of the deforestation has had such a tremendous effect on rainfall and on being able to grow crops. And we're going to see the same thing occur if we get into a situation where there's just no power available in the United States. Yeah, so that operational, besides not having to go out and expose yourself, uh, trying to collect wood and fight over those resources, uh, which are going to be limited, um, that operational security aspect of not having to send up those smoke signals when you're cooking that that limited amount of food that you have stored for your family is really really going to be big and I and I think that that's one of the highest uh, values added by the sun of it. Um, but unless you've stored a lifetime supply of food, you're eventually going to run out. So you're probably going to have to produce more like you were like you were talking about. You know, you guys have a nice garden and your orchard and and. Uh, um, you produce some of your own meats through through or proteins through chickens. Um, without electricity, freezing is going to be next to impossible, and canning is going to also consume a lot of resources. Like we we just talked about with uh, you know having to collect the wood and everything. Uh, if somebody's planning on canning over a fire, so dehydration is probably going to be the best alternative for food preservation in a, in a post grid world. We talked about that a little bit, but uh, can you go in a little more detail about some of the things that you can dehydrate? Well, I mean, you can – any kind of fruit or vegetable um, can be dehydrated. Um, you can um, do jerky, uh, so things like sun-dyed tomatoes. You know, everybody grows tomatoes, goes through that six-week period of the year where they have more tomatoes than they know what to do with. And in the middle of the winter, they're paying a fortune for them um, at a supermarket. And so – being able to take every resource that you have and being able to save it for the winter is going to be extremely important, um, particularly, I mean, I know in, in Florida you you do have a benefit of being able to grow things year-round. Um, so many areas of the country you don't. So having a way to dry or dehydrate without electricity is going to be important because no matter how much food storage you have, it will be depleted eventually. So you're going to have to be creating your own and supplementing it. And um, that's where having the opportunity to use something, I mean, you can, you know, actually sun dry the corn if you want to. And uh, so almost anything that you do, what we did last year, we sun dried sun fields, um, sunflower seeds and uh, had them for a winter snack. So pretty much anything that you grow, you can dry and um, use the sun to dry it as a real advantage and maybe a necessity in a preparedness situation. And you've got a lot of nice recipes on sunoven.com. And then also when folks buy the, the sun oven, you include a disc that's got uh, something like 600 recipes on that disc. Um, but just like all your preps, the thing to do is to get it out, set it up and try some of those recipes now before you, you actually have to do it. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, yeah. I mean, my wife, um, we don't buy any preparedness foods that we don't make. I mean, it's kind of the agreement that um, when we are buying preparedness foods, we've got quite a bit of food stored, but um, we cook everything that we get because we have to know, we really feel it's extremely important to know how to cook it, how it tastes, whether we're going to like it. Um, some people buy preparedness foods and think, well, I'm just going to put it on the shelf and hope I never need it. And that's definitely not the approach to take. You do need to be cooking your foods. You need to be familiar with how to cook them. You need to be familiar with the taste of them. Um, I think a lot of people buy foods that um, 
are going to be have never tasted them and are going to be unpleasantly surprised when they do taste them that it's not what they expected and so being familiar with the foods that you have stored and how they taste how to um, cook them do you need to buy some other kinds of seasonings to make them more palatable and having those on hand and so we have a real firm policy in our household that we do cook the food storage that we have so that we're familiar with it and um, are able to use it, and it can make a, a really big difference um, in then understanding what we're going to do later and not wasting energy on cooking something that we may not want to eat later. Um, by using it in advance, um, we can save the food as well as the energy. And we absolutely love our sun oven. And there's certainly that added layer of security knowing that we can cook our stored food should we ever be attacked by an EMP or any other event that disrupts our electrical supply. Uh, do you have any specials for folks that might be looking to add a sun oven to their preps? Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, I think we've got a link on your website that um, gives a discount for a sun oven and a preparedness and dehydrating package, and uh, there's a $70 savings. And you, you still have the link on your website for that, right? Uh-huh. We sure do. Okay. So, yeah. So if they just go to your website, they can um, that will take them right to sunoven.com, and um, there's a $70 savings on a package that includes a dehydrating kit and comes with parchment paper. And by the way, with the parchment paper, you can, for the dehydrating or for baking, you can reuse each piece, at, you know, five to ten times. Um, it comes with a water pasteurization indicator and stackable pots and bread pans and pretty much everything you need to be prepared for cooking and dehydrating um, is in that package. And uh, there's a $70 savings if um, people use the link on your website to get to it. All right, Paul. Well, thanks so much for that special deal that you made for us. And uh, thanks for, so much for making time to come on the show and talk to us today. Oh, glad to, glad to be with you. Thanks a lot and God bless. In Seven Cows, Ugly and Gaunt, Book One, Behold Darkness and Sorrow, Daniel Walker begins having prophetic dreams about the judgment coming upon America for rejecting God's word. Through one of his dreams, Daniel learns of an imminent threat of an electromagnetic pulse attack sending the country into a technological dark age. If they want to live, Daniel and his friends must focus on faith with and preparation to be ready before the lights go out. Buy your copy of Seven Cows, Ugly and Gaunt, Book One, Behold Darkness and Sorrow, by best-selling author Mark Goodwin, in paperback, Kindle, or audio edition from Amazon.com today.